Issue 13. Sports. People are funny animals. Often our greatest passion is for the things we can't do rather than the things we can. Perhaps we cannot be gifted writers, but are immeasurably moved by great prose or verse or stagecraft. We may not be able to sing a note or play any musical instrument, but become rapturous at the sound of music. Art drives the non artistic into throes of passion, and so it is with sports. Most of us have participated, badly, in various athletic efforts, whether tennis or bowling, and know how far short of the mark we are in terms of the strength, speed, and agility needed for true excellence. So we are especially eager to spend our money and time on sporting events, even on buying items with team logos or other memorabilia that have nothing to do with the actual playing. And then we spend more time talking about it among ourselves. We spend more money. Directly and indirectly, on sporting contests than we do on our health. We spend more time watching them than we spend watching our kids. We talk more about them than we talk to our significant others on all other topics combined. Comprehension 1. In what ways are people funny animals? 2. Does the author imply that most of us are good athletes or poor athletes? 3. Do you think the assertions made in the last sentence are true or rhetorical exaggerations? Are those statements true of you? Express yourself. 1. Why are people so crazy about professional sports? What do they give us? 2. What's the difference between amateur and professional sports, other than payment? 3. What are your favorite sports? Why? 4. Do you play a particular sport or just watch it on TV? 5. What causes professionals to put forth their best effort? Or do you think they tend to be more lackadaisical than amateurs? 6. Why do pro sports teams employ so many foreign players? 7. Do you like indoor or outdoor sports better? Why? 8. Would it be okay for your children to become pro athletes, even if it meant not being able to do anything else? What sport would you particularly recommend? 9. Why are some sports popular in one place and ignored in others? 10. Do you and your friends often talk about pro sports and athletes? What do you usually talk mostly about? 11. Do you think pro athletes deserve the salaries they make? Are they more valuable to society than preachers or poets or police officers, for example? 12. We generally think men are more interested in sports than women are. Is that true? Why or why not? 13. TV commercials for some sports events, like the World Cup and Super Bowl, are astronomically expensive. Why? Do you think they are worth the money? Opinion samples 1. Watching a supreme athletic performance uplifts our spirit and vividly illustrates the possibility of human endeavor. Most of us have never tried to write a novel. So, we don't really appreciate how difficult that task is, even if we greatly admire the novels that gifted writers provide us. But at some time or other, we have all thrown a ball or run a race or swum, so we have a personal yardstick we can use to demonstrate just how wondrous genuine athletic ability is. Though it may not give us a reachable goal we can aspire to, it allows us to fantasize about how our lives might be like if only we had a different body than the one we have. 2. Economic value and social utility are not necessarily in sync. The basic law of supply and demand rules. Society needs many thousands of nurses, teachers, soldiers, firefighters, bank tellers, electricians, clergy, scientists, and so forth in order to operate. There are far too many of them to be well paid, despite their necessity. On the other hand, people are willing to pay a lot of money on entertainment. So, the music, movie, television, and athletic industries 
have a great deal of capital to divide among a fairly small number of practitioners. Basically, it's all math. A very big pie, divided into a very large number of slices, will yield smaller pieces than a smaller pie with only a few divisions. Dialogue Sports Injuries Did you hear about the boxer who was killed? Of course. Everyone is talking about it. I think we should ban that sport. It's barbaric. The reason we talk about it is that it's such a rare occurrence. It hardly ever happens. The actual death in the ring is unusual, but the long term damage to the body, especially the head, is not. But the people who make money from the sport and the fans don't want to talk about that. Boxers and participants in other dangerous sports know the risks involved and choose to play anyway. They train hard to avoid injury, and the sports themselves are constantly improving equipment and modifying rules to make the game safer. Constantly? You mean rarely and only when enough public pressure is brought to bear that it threatens profitability? I admit that there is seldom any dramatic change. But constant in the sense of gradual is indeed the case. Boxing is a good example, in fact. Boxers used to go at each other bare knuckled, and there were almost no rules. But now they wear padded gloves, compete against opponents of a similar size, and operate under many constraints on their fighting conduct. And well trained referee police the matches carefully. And yet, even with all these improvements, boxers still get killed or live out their lives as semi invalids or mentally befuddled. Non boxers die on the job as well. If someone has a heart attack at work, we don't pay much attention. Because the job itself is not the risk factor, unless it's something like mining or firefighting. By your logic, then, we should ban mining and firefighting as hazardous occupations. No. The difference is that we need miners and firefighters. We should pay them more and improve their work conditions as much as possible. But we can't get by without them. But boxers and other athletes are just parasites. They get paid a lot, but don't contribute anything useful to society. People are not forced to spend any money on sports. They do so because they love the competition and the excitement sports provide. And the athletes voluntarily spend years preparing themselves for their professions, long before they know if they will ever make any money at all. Amateur athletes face the same hazards as professionals, but without any of the financial rewards. But they are willing to do so because they love the game. The risk to the innocent amateurs is just another good reason to ban the sport. Do you want your own son to become permanently injured, or worse, because he's playing some sport? I don't want my son to be injured by walking across the street. But there's always some risk involved in doing anything. I want the officials to reduce the physical risk, especially to young players. But I don't want to deprive anyone of the challenge and enjoyment of doing what they like. I would love to enjoy the narcotic high of heroin, but the government bans that activity. Even though some people could make a lot of money producing and distributing it, what's the difference between banning dangerous drugs and banning dangerous sports? Questions 1. Should governments ever ban any human activity, or should people be free to make their own choices in life? 2. What sports are the most dangerous? Do they have to be potentially fatal in order to be regarded as dangerous? 3. As an observer or a participant, which kinds of activity do you most enjoy? Read and discuss. Can we call hunting a sport? Carefully set a situational trap to lure the unsuspecting prey and conceal the danger. Give the group of hunters high powered rifles and any other technology. Allow the animal nothing but its own limited physicality. Keep it as far away from the hunters as possible so it cannot endanger them, and make sure there is no way to escape. Then fire away. The animal has no chance to defend itself or to flee from danger. Is that sport? Or is it just wanton slaughter, merely so the hunters can attain their trophy? Questions 1. We designate a lot of activities as a sport. What criteria should be applied? What about the following and why? Football, chess, marathons, taekwondo, muscle building, 
auto racing, diving, figure skating, computer games, poker, dominoes, horse racing, gymnastics, ballroom dancing, baseball, weightlifting, TV quiz shows, dog shows, golf, tennis, water ballet, solitaire, table tennis, badminton, professional wrestling, fishing. 2. In what ways should hunting be considered a sport? Or should it be classified differently, and why? 3. Since we no longer depend on hunting to provide us with food, what purpose does it serve? Let's talk funny. The impact of the World Cup. The World Cup has intrigued social scientists for a long time, and we've delineated several impacts the games bring about. Such as? First, they boost economies around the world because people consume a lot more alcohol regardless of the game results. Second, they drastically reduce divorce rates because people are too busy watching the games to go to court. And third, they mark the best time for politicians to raise taxes because people are too excited about the games to notice. Why don't you suggest that the World Cup Committee hold the games every year? Because the good effects would whet the appetite for even more frequency. Pretty soon we'd be having a World Cup every week. Questions 1. What possible negative effects might the World Cup produce? 2. For people who are not interested in football, what do they think about the World Cup? 3. If we were forced to choose between ending the World Cup forever or not funding a cure for cancer, which would we pick? Points to ponder. The following sentences are all related thematically. They express a wide difference of opinions and attitudes. You may agree with some of them and disagree with others. Please discuss what you think the sentences mean and what you think about them. 1. Sports does not build character. They reveal it. 2. Unfortunately, the only way to prove that you're a good sport is to lose. 3. When I was 60, my doctor advised me that a man my age shouldn't play tennis. So I assiduously heeded his advice and could hardly wait until I reached 70 to start again. 4. If you're going to throw a club, it is important to throw it ahead of you, down the fairway, so you don't have to waste energy going back to pick it up. 5. When a man wants to kill a tiger, he calls it sport. When a tiger wants to kill him, he calls it a menace. 6. Swimming is a confusing sport because sometimes you do it for fun and other times you do it to avoid dying. 7. What's especially unfortunate about a team buying a pitcher for millions of dollars is that he carries no warranty. 8. The ban on sports betting does exactly what prohibition did. It makes criminals richer.